Hey ya. Um, I wrote a book. <laughs> I know. Anyway, um, a wee bit of background to how it all kind of came about. Technically, if you write, it started off as a booklet, a pamphlet, and then a booklet. And then um, I didn't know this, but anything over sixty-four pages is classified as a book. So this is 66 pages, so it's a book. <laughs> the book's called What No Meat, So What Can You Eat Then? Sort of an adventure and a shared journey of discovery into cutting out as many animal products as possible from my diet. And it's been a kind of long story, kind of, kind of a flowy, quite interesting, you know, things would start, keep popping along, coming in, um, feelings, uh, people, understandings, and then um, the Party Housing Association and my work, the Annex Communities, joint forces and applied for some Scottish Government money. It was a community choices for Scotland, your ideas, your budget and your decision funding. And they brought £20,000 into the local community, our community, which is Partick. You always have to be a constituted group or a charity. And this was an opportunity for an actual individual person to get up to £500. Or a local group that didn't need to be constituted to get £1,500. So it's quite an interesting concept to be offered some money. What would you do if you had £500? Because you don't really think about that because you're kind of getting on life, paying your bills, keeping the roof over your head, getting the shopping in, saving for holidays. But it's like somebody saying, well, what would you do if you had £500? And because um, I was in this process, I kind of thought, well, I've given up eating animal products while I'm doing as much as possible. And so people come up to me and say, what, no meat? So what can you eat then? There's quite a lot of people. And then I would go into this spiel about what I'd been doing and what I was eating and, you know, how, I was, how it made me feel and all this kind of stuff. And it was my personal journey, so I was just sharing that with people. And it became quite an interesting process because I, people were saying, well, so you're vegan? And I'm like, no, well, I don't really like labels and I don't want to label myself as anything. I'm just doing what I feel is right for myself when I feel it's right for myself. Surely that's kind of what life's all about. But it was funny how other people reacted. So anyway, I felt, right, okay, got £500. Why don't I write all the story down? And incidentally, another love is photography. I could write a book and put in my own photography. I could sort of do two things at the one time. So I was thinking, right, for £500, I'll write a book. I'll use the money to get as many copies of this book printed as I can. So that was my proposal, I put that in on the table. I was encouraged by Vicky from the Housing Association to keep the idea in, and I'm, I'm so glad she did because it's been a really lovely experience for me as because my role is for a long time is supporting and part of it is supporting and encouraging other people and it was really sweet to get a bit of encouragement for myself Felt good. So, anyway, so what no meat, what can you eat then? So I'm just going to read a wee bit, because there's loads of things involved in this, as I said earlier, that's, that has come up to this point, and, you know, you, you have these things throughout your life, um, and that's what makes it interesting, because you never know what's what's around the corner. But anyway, it was in the middle of a packet of cheese and onion crisps, Whilst watching John St. Julian on YouTube, there'll be more about him later on, musing on the question of what is the number one thing we as humans can do to protect our planet for our children. And his suggestion was the cutting down or out of animal-based products in your diet. Oh, so down went the packet of crisps, and that was on World Earth Day, April 22nd, 2016. There was a big long story up to that point with my relationship with meat and this eating of meat and animal products. I never really enjoyed eating meat or like the fat on the edge of, say, a pork chop and the wee grizzly bit where the egg yolk joins the egg white always makes me bulk a bit each time. 
and I've never got my head around the way animals are killed or can be kept in pretty poor conditions just so we humans can eat them. Anyway, that is my mini rant finished and I am a great believer in each to their own so I don't preach, I hope. I just, I'm just sharing if you're interested in my story. But it has been funny because funny how most folk immediately went, so, ah, so you're a vegan then? Because it's, I mean, obviously it's pretty topical these days. So anyway, so no, not really. Just cutting out as many animal products from a diet as possible. Folks seem to want to label me and felt they could make comments on my personal choices, which I found strange but interesting. Kind of, this had happened beforehand when I stopped drinking alcohol for three years. Because um, people are, you know, they're questioning you because it's maybe something in the back of their minds, I find. But they kind of pushing it away by slightly, not attacking, but questioning your judgment. So I found it quite interesting, but I suppose that's another book on al alcohol. But anyway, my life, I live it my way. I feel is right for me, what works for me, yes. Is that cool? Okay, coolio. Curiously, coincidentally, or just a path I was going down, previously I met Katie on a weekend at Lendrick Lodge. And we became friends and she was a vegan and her plate always looked really, really healthy. I then met Addy in Nepal and we became friends and he was raw vegan for health reasons and his plate always looked really, really healthy. Tracy I met years before all of this but then she went vegan and her plate always looked really, really healthy. Well, we while later I met Shen again and we became more than friends and he introduced me to John St Julian on YouTube as John was a vegan and Shen had started cutting down his consumption of meats. So coupled with my own unease of eating at some animal products and that night watching John's video, I now find myself giving veganism, in inverted commas, a try. And immediately I felt lighter, more peaceful. Later, realising due to no more meat chatter going on in my head, the sort of same thing had happened with um, when I stopped drinking alcohol. There was a there's a lightening of that chattering in your head because you know maybe you're having a wee bit too much or there's a sale on somewhere or there's a party coming up and it was just all this chat chat chat. So it's quite nice. So when the meat thing went, a lot of chat about the meat because there's tons of stuff out there about how you know how wrongly animals are treated and stuff like that. And um, it's great. To know I'm, I'm still part of it because I'm still on this planet, but I'm not partaking in that part of it, and it does lighten you up a bit. Anyway, so I'll read on with this first page of the book. So I started with what we have in my uh, my tea, like so I tried soy milk, yuck, not really for me, but then found almond milk and then soy cream for, for my coffee. Drinking tea just went. Eggs went easy because of that wee grizzly bit. Cheese went easy enough, always felt a bit too gunky for me. Did miss toast and melted cheese for a bit. Few friends watched on with curiosity, then Dan, Louise and Gary gave veganism a go too. So what am I trying to say? I just seem to be ready for a change in what I ate, as I have found that I can get in a bit of an automatic pilot rut with it all. I fancied and was up for a change, and it has ended up being quite an adventure. One of the highlights being attempted to climb Mount Kilimanjaro in September 2017 to raise funds for John St Julian's charity, www.sheertanzania.com. Our team all climbed on a vegan diet. I also did a rice and bean challenge for a week back home before the climb to get an insight into what many folk in Tanzania have to eat on a daily basis. More on Tanzania later. Anyway, to get on with it, here goes. So that's just sort of the introduction to my book. So I got the £500 and I started just just with publisher. Um, and that night of when I started, I just kind of looked at my tea and I kind of thought, that looks pretty healthy and colourful. I'll just use that as my front cover. So click to a photograph of that in the kitchen. That was my front cover. Kind of thought, well, greeny, because it's 
you know, you do eat a lot of vegetables. Not necessarily. There's tons of stuff you can eat, but that that there's there's more than you have to you have to get the book to find all that out. Anyway, um, joking apart. So front cover. Um, then I just put a bit of an introduction. You know, book by Jane Cowie, part at Glasgow, funded by Community Choice of Scotland. And there's a big long story. We have a knit and natter group, and there's a penguin operation penguin and. The first penguin that was ever knitted that sparked that whole thing off is in that front page because I quite like the idea, you know how like, you get penguin books? So this is the sort of knitted penguin group because another thing of life I find is um, I feel that people, well, you know, I, I feel there should be more fun in the world, you know, maybe to balance things off. So I've kind of put quirky wee funny bits in here um, to also... Um, I'll read this as well. By the way, included in this ensemble, which is my book, are some of the vegan dishes I now eat. A wee story of my ongoing journey into veganism, health benefits, and health benefits some of the ingredients, quotes I like, and loads of mostly random photographs, because catching the glimpse of that moment in a photo is a love of mine. The kind folk of Partick saw fit to vote for me and my idea, and I really appreciate that fact and the funding for the opportunity to be able to create something for myself to share with the world. I confess I have been a bit indulgent because I can and have included photos of my grandchildren, obviously because I love you all very much and also because I know they will be tickled to see themselves in Granny's book. My children, family and friends that have supported me along the path are also included because I love and appreciate you all too. And then you go into sort of basic uh, changes that you can have, you know, the different varieties of milk, um, buttery type th yogurts, cheeses. But cheeses didn't happen for a while because um, it was six months into the journey that Sainsbury's announced that they were starting a range of cheeses. So I kind of ran round to Sainsbury's and Crow Road the next day, came in and then I found one that I really quite enjoyed. It doesn't melt. That was a bit disappointing. But there's a pub that we go to sometimes, Shane and I, for a nice, you know, when we're treating ourselves. It's Bar 78 in Finiston. And they have a vegan burger with cheese that melts. <laughs> so if you ever feel like a bit of melted vegan cheese that um, for it, that's where it is. Um, always loved a bonfire with a marshmallow since I've been a child. And then it was uh, there's gelatine in it, which is an animal product. But then I was introduced to there are vegan ones. It's weird. You think you're going to have to give something up, and then you 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 know, we maybe hold on to something and then you eventually give it up and then there's some better <laughs> that's been waiting there anyway. Um, it's quite a lot of lessons in life as well, which has been interesting. Oh, oh my goodness, this cauliflower burger is just unbelievable. I mean, you just wouldn't think, but it's because it's um, sort of saturated in one sauce and then it's kind of baked into that and then you put another sauce on it and bake it into that. Anyway, there's a lovely recipe in here that my brother made for Christmas. Um, chestnut and cashew nut roast. It's really delicious because I've got a gravy, oh my god, that's amazing with everything. And then I've got a wee bit of section on um, chocolate and my photography and I really, really got into flowers. I don't know why. Well, just basically nature and flowers and colours and just kind of blows you away. Just And the photography of them, so I don't know if it's an age thing or whatever, but I'm really enjoying that side of it too, the beauty that's out there all all over the place and really seeing it and it takes your breath away. A year into the vegan adventure we got to the top of the waiting list for a local plot with the Partick Community Growing Project. Growing season one, didn't know what I was doing so didn't grow much. Year two, still not sure what doing but planted loads and it all grew. One highlight of last year which blew me away was growing a cauliflower from seed and actually grew a cauliflower from seed. We did have a great summer that year, so I'm sure the sun and the sunshine had worked their magic too. But I'll tell you, with the, it was actually quite funny with the cauliflower because I didn't know that it was, I thought it was a cabbage, so I was eating all the leaves. And then one day I kind of turned around and there it was, it, it was a cauliflower. So basically cauliflower leaves are great for eating too, as if you think it's just cabbage. And then I put a vegan cheese sauce over the cauliflower to celebrate and it was yum, ate scrum. So a wee bit about there, and there was a wee bit about poppy seeds, and weirdly so, things like poppy seeds, because um, a poppy grew in the plot, and then I found out all these health benefits that are connected to poppy seeds, and also um, 
for some reason sauerkraut. I got into eating sauerkraut and it turns out there's tons of health benefits for sauerkraut. So I was kind of looking at the health benefits of the ingredients as well. Um, I put some quotes in it as well because it's my book so I can do what I like. And I've got this one, Blessed are the curious for they shall have adventures. So anyways, I said earlier, we ended up in Tanzania through supporting John St. Julian um, and his um, Feathertail Village for children and his Angel's Gate for young young men and all the other things he does over there. He's got um, animal rescue. It's amazing, actually. So we just helped go over and helped to raise some funds. And um, part of what you can do with that for only like £16 a month, which I think is amazing, is you can sponsor a child. I've done that before through a sort of bigger organisation, but there's all that chat now with you know big charities where you're having to pay the CEO and the admin administration and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of the time, you're finding out that a lot, of part, quite a big chunk of your ch your money that you're giving to charities actually doesn't get to what you're giving it for. It gets to the administration of it all and the management of it all. So that was one of the things that I really loved about John's um, ch charity or organisation, um, what is it, it's an NGO, is the fact that all the money goes to the kids because he's doing it through um, Facebook, he's doing the marketing through Facebook and YouTube channel and all the money that's going, so, so what's that thing you can get? It's where you can, uh, Patreon, Patreon, so people are putting money into him deciding if they want to pay for that side of things but the money that goes to the kids goes to the children which is amazing so for £16 a month so we're sponsoring Zucra and for £16 a month it enables her to go to school have food to eat and a mattress to sleep on and pay for any medical bills that she needs so we're supporting Zucra through towards she, her dream of becoming a teacher so when we first met her she was 10 now she's 12 and so I thought well why not um, when giving out these books, people could, because Zucra's in the book as part of the story, I thought, well, why not when I'm giving them out, if people wanted to put a donation, we'd put it towards the continuation of her sponsorship, which we raised £800. So that keeps the sponsorship going for her. So the Partick, Partick sponsoring her now through me for, oh, that's August 2023. So that's pretty cool. And we're going to keep going until she becomes a teacher and after that even if she needs a wee bit more support so that was the so there's pictures in there of Zucra and, and Tanzania and and then we have the treat section and that's my son and then so you've got sort of places you can go and treat yourself and then we've got Oscar that's my grandson who he um, he introduces the healthy tips section and a loved one of his quotes years ago where he first ate a tangerine and he said this tastes like being outside because <laughs> it does it's so fresh and I've got a wee quote on his page which says we don't inherit the earth from our ancestors we from our children on reflection working on this project pulling together all my thoughts recipes photographs quotes etc has been quite a task but a fun one a process of trying to make some kind of sense of a part of my life's journey, putting a bit of it into some kind of order. This has been a privilege and a pleasure that I would want to thank you all for. My soul honours your soul. I honour the place in you where the entire universe resides. I honour the light, love, truth, beauty and peace within you because it's also within me. In sharing these things, we are united. We are the same. We are one. So thank you, Community Choice of Scotland. Thank you to the Annex and Partick Housing Association and everybody that um, took part in this. Also, Glasgow City Council put a wee bit of funding in to enable us to have a launch for the book and to celebrate Vegetarian Week, um, National Vegetarian Week. So they funded um, to have a big sort of community lunch and that is part of what you're well, actually, this is what you're watching. There's some footage from that day. And um, one of the things I'd like to share is the, well, there's a few things, but the main thing about this is it's called participatory budgeting. Hopefully, down the line, we are, as folk on the ground, folk in our communities, going to have the opportunity to 
have the spending to do things that we want to do with our community, with ourselves as individuals that are going to benefit our community because um, a percentage of Scottish Government money or City Council money will then be put into the communities to decide how they would like to spend it. So this is a great process for us to have gone through as a community party because lots of other people had their £500 idea or their £1,500 idea. I think it was 23 groups on, or individuals were funded and we've kind of come together as quite a force and it was it was a lovely process to see and be involved in and encourage and support and be encouraged. Um, it was quite empowering for the community and it's, it's a love. So basically we need to develop that muscle um, of of going, yeah, no problem, we can spend £500, yeah, we can spend £1,500, yeah, we can, we can spend any money you want to give us for our community because we've got an avenue, we've got a structure, we've got a... A group of people. We've got people with ideas. We've got other people that have, other people's ideas have been sparked off because of this round of of funding, and I'm sure we're going for the funding again. It'd be interesting to see what comes out of that. It's um, it was a really nice sense of community um, joining joining forces and and being around each other. And you see other people that have done their projects, and you're kind of nodding at them, and you're nodding at them, and you get to know people, and it's lovely to see their skills. Kind of doing that wee bit in um, like that with the Party Community Grown project I mentioned earlier, where uh, the poppy seeds and growing the, the cauliflower. Um, there, It's like we're growing vegetables and herbs and spices and stuff like that, but it's a really nice idea to grow people and grow their talents and grow their skills. And um, it's been really interesting to be at the other side of that, because normally I'm supporting folk growing, but I've not been supported to grow myself, if you get me, so I, I kind of got a better understanding of it now, so it's kind of changing the way I operate, how I work, because it's good to give people the support with a challenge or something, but step way back and let them find their own ways of going about it and stuff like that. I mean, I, I spent hours on this book, but I'm really chuffed with myself actually that I did and I finished it and it was amazing getting that big box. Oh yeah, on the printing side of things I tried a few different printing places, it didn't kind of work, I kept going and then because we had the, the launch and I had to have the book ready for the launch, it was like slight panicky, but I came across um, digital printing online and they were just absolutely fantastic. Big thank you to everybody that's been involved in this process. But anyway, so that's my book, What No Meat, So What Can You Eat Then? So when people ask me that, I can give them a book.